Good morning guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and I got a really interesting haul video for you today. I got a couple of really nice pieces and I've got one outstanding item. In fact, I think I'm going to start with the outstanding item. I absolutely love it. I paid a lot of money for it, mind. I went to Splot and Bessemer in Cardiff this weekend and I bought quite a lot. In fact, I've got probably two or three days worth of film in um, for this week, all of which come from the weekend. Um, so th I think we'll get started. This is our first item. Now, apart from the fact it weighs a ton, what is it? Well, we got a label on here. Now, originally when I bought it, I bought it off a gentleman who bought it out of a government surplus auction. And he buys a lot of military items. Now, whilst I was there discussing it with him, wondering what it was, I thought it may have been a sinker for a lightweight mine or something like that. Now, I know it's got a label with a barcode on it, but that don't mean nothing. That could be added at any time. This is solid brass. It's not um, iron or anything like that. We're talking solid brass and we're talking heavy. If you look at the surface, you can see how much wear it's got. It's been used. Now, the fact it's a non-ferrous metal means it's made to go underwater. If it was a practice bomb or something like that, it'd just be made out of iron or something like that, Ali and they'd chuck it out and they wouldn't care about it. This would have been very expensive to make. It's got to be over 30, 40 kilos. It weighs an absolute ton. Now, I put it on Talking Antiques looking for advice. And I've got a few theories, but what I didn't think to do, there's a phone number on here as well. Now, we tracked the phone number using Google, and the phone number is for the Government Environmental Agency. Now, what we've come up with so far is that obviously it's a sinker of some description we can't decide whether it would sink under a boat and as they drag and it drag it along like that and then the line would be hung down and it'd have all scientific equipment on the line for measuring or whether it'd be a sinker to hold a net in place whichever way it goes it's made to go onto the ground because it's so scratched up but that's the only thing i can think of i'll put it down in a minute oh. It is literally so heavy, it is unbelievable. Now, it's got, a, as I said, it's got a few holes where it would have been mounted. Now, a few theories were that it would be dragged in the boat and the weight would hold it down. But in all honesty, this is that heavy. It'd be just dragging along the bottom of the sea. This is 30, 40 kilos, something like that. Well, as you can see, I'm struggling to hold it. Solid brass. Um, one of the theories was, it, as I say, to be dragged, but then the hole would have been at the front of the nose, so you drag it out flat. This one has to be mounted. You can see the hole going straight through, so it would have to have a line coming that way, which is why I thought it was a sinker for a mine. Um, but it's definitely environmental um, agency, um, and it's definitely a sinker of some description. Now, I paid £100 for this, so it have not come in for nothing. However, the price of brass and bronze and that at the moment is something like 3 4 quid a kilo, something like that. My money is back just in scrap value. There's no gamble whatsoever. Um, cannot find another out there anywhere on Google, on eBay, you name it, I've searched. Now, don't tell me. Now, with these holes, you could actually mount it and turn it into a weather vane or something like that, but it's so heavy, I doubt it swivel. But what a beautiful piece to have in a man cave on a sideboard. What the hell is that? What a talking point. It looks like a torpedo. It looks like a bomb. But literally, for a hundred pound, I wasn't going to leave it there. That is one cool item. Now, asking price. It's just a shot in the dark what someone willing to pay. I think there's about 120 to 130 pounds worth of brass there. 
um, I want double our minimum. So I'm going to put up 275 on it and wait for an offer. You're not going to find another. So it is simply finding someone who wants it. It could go tomorrow, it could take five years to sell. It is literally, you're not going to find another one. When someone comes in who's got spare cash and think that has to be on my sideboard or in my man cave, whatever, then it's gone. So I absolutely adore it. <laughs> what can I say? Government Geological Survey uh, from Essex uh, was the phone number. And the suggestion we've gone with was um, Oceanographer uh, Sinker. So that's what we're uh, calling it. Moving on, something a little less heavy. We'll move on to a bit of Danish. We have this beautiful hand painted Royal Copenhagen porcelain vase, Bingen Grondal. So, really, really nice vase. Uh, I paid a fiver for that in Bessemer. So, I see that at about 25 to 30 pounds. It is artist signed, that's the artist signature there on the base. That'll be the artist signature. I haven't researched it yet, um, but Royal Copenhagen, nice vase like that. It could be better, it could be bigger, but 25, 30 quid, no problem at all, to be honest with you. <coughs> Next piece we got is quite nice. We have a carved elephant, so we're talking probably Indian. It's all inlaid with ivory, all this is all ivory. Now I paid a tenner for it. It's got one snapped task and one missing task. So I'm going to take that one out totally and sell it with zero tasks. It's quite a nice one. It's this shape because obviously it's got the blanket going over it for riding. So yeah, really, really nice, interesting elephant. Cost me a tenner. I see that at 45 to 55 on anybody's money, no problem whatsoever. So, yeah. A couple of nice pieces there. Moving on, we have a pair of candlesticks. Now these are very heavy. You can see they're engineered out of a solid piece of brass. These are not screwed in to hollow or anything. This is all solid. It's been turned on a lathe to create this barley twist effect. You can see there. Looking at the bases there, you, you can just imagine the weight. They're over a kilo each. Uh, really nicely weighted. You're not going to tip, tip them over. It's almost like a capstan design for a ship or something, but no. Engineered, somebody's had a bit of spare time, had a bit of brass, and just gone, oh, let's have a bit of fun. And they've made these on a turning lathe. Oh, they do unscrew. My apologies there. So they've made the base and the stem separate. Wow, the size of them threads. But you can see it is absolutely solid. We're not talking a hollow piece here. Now I paid six pound for these in splot. It's about a 10 as worth of scrap value, 10 to 15 pound in scrap. So a couple of kilos, no problem whatsoever each. Nice pair of candlesticks, very well made. Christmas is coming, candlesticks are going to be a good seller. Um, I'll be asking about 30 quid for those. Moving on, as you know, I love miners lamps. Um, now these two come from Cardiff, I got two, and I paid £40 for the pair. I was trying to figure out if it was 40 or 45. It was 40 pounds for the pair. Now the first one we got here is in English. It's an Eccles. But this is an original lamp. So this one was has gone underground. It's even got the number on it. 254. Let me see if it's got a mine on it. Sometimes they stamp these on the inside here with a mine. This one isn't stamped 
can clearly see it's been used mine. What's all important is the gauze is in good condition, the glass is in good condition. It's a really nice example of a lamp to be honest with you. Uh, so we've got a nice English Eccles, the protector. It's number 1A. And the two lamps I'm pretty confident were 40 quid. I'm trying to rack my brain, were they 45 or 40 pounds? I'm sure they were 40 pounds. And I see that one at about 55 or 65 pounds on its own because it's an original. It's not a Welsh one. Welsh ones pull a lot more money. Thomas and Williams. But it's still a really nice condition, nice lamp. I'd be surprised if I don't get 60 pounds for that. This one's a reproduction. Uh, it's a Thomas and Williams from Aberdeen. Aberdeen, South Wales. It's got the number engraved long here, 214315. Now if we look down here, it's got ETW, I don't know if you can see it. It's got ETW across here, made in Wales, UK here, and it's got a date of 1988. So we've got a really nice lamp again. All intents and purposes, this one's never been underground. Use only paraffin stamped on it. So, and again, the gauze is in good condition. So, a nice 1988 lamp, so work that out. So, you're talking 12, um, about 32 years, somewhere over there. We're almost in uh, 2020. So, it's about a 32 year old lamp. And I see that one about 40, 45 pounds all day long. The reproductions look like this, the true reproductions. Take a look at the front. See the Welsh Dragon versus the Thomas and Williams Cambrian lamps. A reproduction, as you can see, I'm selling at 22. That's going to go out for about 40, 45. So for my 40 quid outlay, I'm going to return 100 pound, no problem whatsoever, which I'll double my money after costs, which is absolutely fabulous. My final item for today's video, guys, is a Tiffany-style reproduction lamp. It's in the form of a butterfly. Now, if you remember, if you follow my videos, I had a pair of these in back about two months ago. Uh, something like that, six to eight weeks ago. Uh, they come over the door here. I didn't give a lot from them. I gave something like 10 or 15 quid the pair, and I sold them £20 each within an hour. So I saw this one on Saturday, and I thought, you know what? i got to be having it. The dealer, it was a dealer I knew, I asked him how much, he said 20 quid, I said you got a zero chance. I said that's uh, all the money, if not more than what I'm going to sell it for. In the end, I had it for £7. Um, I think he was trying his luck, he was trade, he wasn't a member of the public, so he knew what he was doing. Um, he picked it up for one or two pound in the morning, he made a quick profit. I'm going to put 20 on there. More often or not, people come over the door and they'll knock your prices, but for some reason, the last two of these I sold, they sold full price, they didn't ask, they just come in, bought them, gone. So I'm hoping I'll get 20 quid, but if someone comes in and says 15 quid, it's gone again. For a nice little Tiffany lamp, see if it lights up. Let's hope I don't get fried. Are we ready? Ah, oh, look at that. And it's a worker. So... Happy days, it's stinking dirty, mind. You can see all the cobwebs now over it. The one thing I like to do is make sure my shop stays clean and the stock is clean and well presented. Now that doesn't mean I take the patina off metal way, but I clean all my ceramics, I clean my books, I clean my I clean everything. This lamp now will have a really good clean before I put it out later on today. And it'll make a difference between selling and not selling. He bought that on the car boot sale, alright, he's made a profit. Why not sit down in the evening, give him a bit of a clean, put him out on a table, put less on your table, display it nice, get more money. Um, but yeah, that's Cardiff for you. It's very hard at the moment to sell antiques and collectibles, so at the moment it's a buyer's market and I'm taking advantage of it. Guys, I think that's about it for today's video. I got some cracking gear to put in uh, some of my videos this week. So I'm going to keep one special piece for every video. And I've had one hell of a haul of walking sticks in. Chinese silver. you want to stay tuned for that one later in the week. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Bye for now.